How Dogs Were Domesticated and Became Our Best Friends Dogs are one of the most popular pets in the world, and for good reason. They're loyal, loving, and always happy to see us. But did you know that dogs weren't always our friends? In fact, they were once wild animals. So, how did dogs go from being wild to being our best friends? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll be taking a closer look at the method that was used to domesticate dogs and how they eventually ended up as man's best friend. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Number 1. Sharing Food with Wolves There are actually many theories about how dogs were domesticated, and from them, one of the most widely accepted theories is that sharing food with wolves played a key role in the process. This is because wolves are pack animals, and they are naturally drawn to food. If a wolf saw that humans were regularly sharing food such as small game, they would obviously be more likely to approach them and try to interact with them. This would give humans the opportunity to get to know the wolves and learn more about their behavior. Secondly, wolves are also social animals, and they absolutely crave companionship. If a wolf found that it could get food and friendship from humans, it would be more likely to stick around and form a bond with them. Reciprocally, this would allow the wolves to spend more time around humans, which would help them to become more accustomed to human behavior. What's interesting is that there is actually some archaeological evidence to support the theory that sharing food with wolves helped to domesticate them. For example, in 2013, a team of researchers found the remains of a wolf that had been buried with a human in a grave in Belgium. The wolf was dated to be about 14,200 years old, which is about the same time that dogs are thought to have been first domesticated. This suggests that wolves and humans may have been interacting with each other for a long time before dogs were actually domesticated. But that's not all. In addition to the archaeological evidence, there is also some genetic evidence to support the theory that sharing food with wolves helped to domesticate them. For example, dogs have a gene that allows them to digest starch, which is a food that wolves do not typically eat. This gene is thought to have been passed on to dogs from humans who shared their starchy foods with the wolves. Number 2. Cohabitation Other than the sharing of food, the cohabitation of early humans and wolves played a fundamental role in establishing the emotional bonds that have solidified dogs as cherished companions throughout history. The emotional intelligence of both humans and wolves played a pivotal role in fostering this bond. Through shared experiences and interactions, they began to recognize and respond to each other's emotions and signals, facilitating effective communication and understanding. Wolves, like dogs, are capable of forming emotional attachments, making it easier for them to connect with humans on an emotional level. The cohabitation process fostered mutual trust and cooperation. Wolves found solace in the company of humans, while humans benefited from the companionship and loyalty of these animals. As wolves became more comfortable and less fearful around humans, trust began to develop, laying the foundation for the emotional attachment that would solidify the partnership. Engaging in shared activities, such as hunting together, further reinforced the emotional bond between humans and wolves. The roles that wolves played in human societies deepened their emotional connection. Some served as protectors, alerting humans to potential dangers, while others became valuable hunting partners, contributing to successful hunts and securing a stable food supply for both species, turning it into a symbiotic relationship. In the modern world, the emotional bond between dogs and humans remains a powerful force that has carried over from the old days. Dogs have become integral parts of human families, providing unconditional love, companionship, and emotional support. Interestingly, scientific studies have shown that interactions with dogs can lead to the release of oxytocin, a hormone associated with bonding and social attachment in both humans and dogs. Number 3. Genetic Changes Moving on, let's go over what changed in the wolves of then to make way for the dogs of now. 
Well, the process of domestication wasn't a rapid transformation, but a gradual one, spanning thousands of years. Wolves that exhibited more docile and friendly behaviors were better able to thrive in the human environment, and this behavioral shift actually had a significant genetic basis. It's going to get a bit sciencey, but let's talk about it. Through natural selection, the wolves that displayed a higher level of tolerance towards humans were more likely to survive and reproduce. This selection pressure favored traits associated with reduced fear and aggression, as these wolves were more likely to approach human settlements and take advantage of the previously mentioned food resources that humans provided. As these friendlier wolves reproduced, their genes for sociability and docility were passed on to subsequent generations gradually altering the genetic makeup of the wolf population. The domestication process influenced a range of genetic traits, including behavioral, physiological, and morphological characteristics. In contrast to their wild ancestors, domestic dogs tend to display a more extensive range of behaviors, such as heightened social cognition and attachment to humans. Their genetic predisposition for cooperative behavior allows them to form deep bonds with their human companions, making them the beloved pets we know today. Physiologically, dogs underwent changes as well. For example, compared to wolves, domestic dogs have smaller brains relative to their body size. This is likely due to the reduced cognitive demands of survival in the human-managed environment. Modern advances in genetics have allowed scientists to unravel the genetic history of dogs further. Studies analyzing the genomes of various dog breeds and comparing them with wolves have shed light on the timing and genetic mechanisms that underpin dog domestication. These investigations have provided valuable insights into the genetic changes that occurred throughout the long and intricate process of domestication. Number 4. Selective Breeding on the road to becoming man's best friend, selective breeding played a pivotal role in the evolution of dogs following their domestication. Once early humans established a cooperative relationship with wolves and gradually transformed them into more docile and friendly companions, they recognized the potential benefits of enhancing certain traits in these animals through controlled breeding. This process led to the development of various dog breeds each uniquely suited to fulfill specific roles and tasks. So, what is selective breeding? Well, the concept of selective breeding involves intentionally mating dogs with desirable characteristics to pass on those traits to their offspring. Over generations, this practice has resulted in a remarkable diversity of dog breeds, each distinguished by their appearance, behavior, and specialized skills. Early humans quickly realized that dogs could serve different purposes based on their inherent traits and abilities. Some dogs exhibited exceptional hunting instincts and skills, making them valuable assets for tracking and retrieving game. Others showed natural herding instincts, making them adept at guiding and managing livestock. Additionally, certain dogs demonstrated excellent protective instincts, making them ideal as guard dogs. By selectively breeding dogs with these desired traits, humans were able to amplify their usefulness for specific tasks. Selective breeding also influenced a range of behavioral characteristics in dogs. Some breeds are known for their intelligence and trainability, making them excellent working dogs and companions. On the other hand, certain breeds have been selected for their loyalty and affectionate nature, making them wonderful family pets and therapy dogs. Breeding for specific behavioral traits has allowed dogs to excel in roles as diverse as service animals, search and rescue dogs, and therapy dogs, among others. The wide variety of dog breeds is perhaps most noticeable in their physical appearances. Selective breeding has led to distinctive differences in size, shape, coat type, and coloration. Some breeds, like the Greyhound, were selectively bred for their exceptional speed and agility while others, like the St. Bernard, were bred for their strength and endurance in mountainous terrains. These physical variations not only make each breed visually distinct, but also equip them with unique advantages for their intended functions. Not all selective breeding is driven by utility or function, though. In many cases, dogs have been bred for aesthetic reasons or just as beloved companions.
Breeds like the Poodle, Shih Tzu, and Dachshund have been shaped more for their charm, beauty, and compatibility with human households than for specific working roles. And that's how it was done. Overall, the process of domestication might seem a bit tedious and also might take too long, but hasn't it been worth it? I mean, imagine a world without dogs. We certainly don't want to. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on videos like this. See you next time!